Dear viewers, many a times we need to transfer money outside of India. Indian currency is not a freely convertible currency. You can't transfer money as you wish like. You can't walk into a bank branch, give Indian rupees and ask for a forex. To transfer it into a foreign exchange and remit to somebody outside of India is governed by several rules and regulations. In this episode, we are going to talk to you about how you can transfer money from India to a destination outside of India and what are the rules and regulations that are governing it. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but investment consultant and a financial planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, to talk to you about the rules and regulations which are governing the movement of money from Indian rupee to a foreign exchange outside, I have brought to the studio my eminent faculty, Chartered Accountant C.A. Sriram. C.A. Sriram is a familiar face on our channel. He is a practicing Chartered Accountant, a partner at Nitin J. Shetty & Co. He is an expert on international taxation and various issues pertaining to the taxation. Welcome to the show, Mr. C. A. Sriram. Thank you. Mr. Sriram, many a times people need to transfer money from India to abroad. Right. Uh, these days, people go on tours, uh, people study outside of India, maybe a family member is outside of India, suddenly there is a need, uh, people get stuck, there may not be a job. There could be various reasons because of which they need to uh, transfer money outside of India. And even some people want to go abroad for taking the medical assistance or people may have uh, to invest outside of India. This could be the various reasons. How can a person transfer the Indian rupee that he has into a forex and remit it outside of India? Uh, what are the rules and regulations uh, which are there? Please uh, bring it to the uh, knowledge of our audience. Now. Um when a fund which is in INR, Indian rupee, is getting transferred outside India, then there is a regulation hmm. which is um, commonly called as LRS, okay. Liberalized Remittance Scheme. Oh, there is a name for it. It is yes. called Liberalized Remittance, Remittance scheme. scheme. Okay. So, this is a scheme which has been framed by RBI under uh, FEMA regulations for transfer of funds by a resident to a non-resident. Okay. Okay. A transfer of funds by a resident to a non-resident. So, any resident who wants to transfer any funds outside in, uh, of India to any other non-resident, then he can come under the scheme and without much of a paperwork, he can transfer the funds outside of India for all the permitted capital and current account transactions. Okay. And under the scheme, any person can transfer up to 2,50,000 USD okay. outside of India in a financial year. Okay. So, this is the scheme framed for the transfer of funds from India to outside of India by a resident to a non-resident. Okay. So, LRS is only for residents or even in NRA can you utilize it? Under LRS, this scheme actually is framed for transfer of funds by a resident to a non-resident. Okay. So, in any transaction there can be there will be two parties and residential status of each person can be different okay say a resident can transfer funds to a, another resident resident can transfer person uh, to a non resident a non resident can transfer to a non resident or a non resident can tr transfer to a resident okay so now out of these four type of transactions only one transaction is covered under lrs that is when a resident want to transfer to another non-resident, okay. a recipient being a non-resident, a remitter being a resident, that transaction is covered under LRS. Okay. Let me uh, quickly summarize here. Liberalized remittance scheme, only a resident Indian can remit money. It is not for non-resident Indians. Correct. And the limit of transaction is US dollar, 250,000 US dollar per year. Correct. Right? Correct. And if somebody has to transfer this money into another currency, let's say Euro or Yen or Canadian dollar or an Australian dollar, 
how the limit is equivalent of us dollar it is equivalent of us dollars okay one problem that might come here is uh, you say 250000 us dollar and the price of us dollar varies from time to time so how will the indian rupee equivalent is uh, calculated here uh, on the date of transfer what is the limit okay so that has to be determined okay if somebody has transferred 3 4 times each time when he has transferred it is calculated as a us dollar equivalent and you total it up correct so the scheme says it is 250000 us dollar you could be sending it to different currencies ultimately it should fit into that 250000 us dollar correct so this scheme is not for an nri to remit money from here to outside of india this no. is purely for uh residents to remit money outside of india correct so this could be useful for somebody or if your children are studying outside of india you want to go outside for uh, medical treatment correct or buy something uh, uh outside of india the assets and other things correct. what you said even so that is where it is useful or to help, uh, help a family member who is stuck outside of india suddenly you try want to transfer money that is where the scheme will be useful correct and even also um, purchase of uh, online uh, say items or say digital items okay. say purchase of for license okay. or for some software which is you know sold by a non resident vendor okay so everything is covered under this so if they have to buy something let's say i have to buy a book from us or some something and i am making an online uh, uh, order for that so that is also governed by lrs scheme yes okay mr shriram you told me now uh, about uh, uh, the money can be transferred on capital account or for the current account correct so this is a technical term the chartered accountants can understand correct what about the audience can you explain them in a simple way what is this capital account and current account uh, otherwise it becomes very complex see correct now when we are talking about a particular transaction as such hmm. so under fema we are talking and we need to see the rules of fema now under fema a capital account transaction has been defined it says that any transaction which alters or dilutes or creates any mm. asset or liability mm. so that particular transaction will be called as a capital account transaction mm. for, example for example if i if a resident want to open a foreign bank account in foreign currency abroad mm. so it creates an asset for him outside of india that mm. is called as a capital account capital transaction account. say his investment abroad into uh, mutual funds or shares of a foreign company that will be called as a capital account transaction okay so at the same time if a resident wants to lend money to a non resident in inr hmm. that is also called as a capital account transaction or say repayment of loans that is also covered as under a capital account transaction so any transaction which is creating an asset or altering the value of the asset or which is creating a liability or altering or diluting a liability or uh, diluting a asset that will be covered under a capital account transaction okay under so that means something is getting created there or it is getting altered you are either paying it off or you are buying it or you are keeping it as for future use this is a capital account Correct. transaction and if it is a plain expenditure as such okay or say plain income okay which got generated out of the investment that you made they are all covered under current account in fact the current account has been defined the current account transaction has been defined under fema negatively to say that any transaction which is not a capital account transaction is covered under current account okay so a transaction which comes as a capital account is well defined correct if something is not recorded there it is a current account current account, current account transaction it's as simple as that right now you also said that uh the capital account or current account transactions which are permitted by uh, fema under that you can transfer the money correct right correct so this is a very broad universe correct this is a very broad universe how will the person uh, who is remitting the money he will come to know about what is permitted or what is not permitted is there a simpler way my audience can understand am i doing the right thing or wrong thing see as far as capital account transaction under fema are concerned they have given some certain list these are the capital account transaction which are permitted okay and how it has been permitted say for example some transactions are permitted with the prior approval of rbi or some transactions are permitted with the prior approval of central government so 
this is this is well defined mm -hmm. so under fema ruling whatever there is a golden rule we say normally that a capital account transaction which is permitted is always allowed and which is not permitted is not at all allowed okay so if you come to know that our transaction is a capital account transaction then you just need to go through the list of capital account transaction which is allowed under fema okay and by what means it is allowed say by with the prior approval or direct whatever so that is always allowed if something is not mentioned anywhere under fema rules they are not at all allowed okay okay where it is uh, comes to a current account transaction it is the reverse of that okay all the current account transactions are freely allowed okay no restrictions no restrictions unless they are specifically prohibited under fema okay okay so if my understanding is correct if somebody has to transfer money outside of india under capital account that particular activity should be listed there correct if it is not listed there you are not permitted not at all permitted right in case of current account which is the usual uh, uh, spending purpose uh, travel medical expense and various other things unless it is specifically mentioned that you cannot transfer there Correct. everything else is permitted so this is what you call as the golden rule yes but my dear viewers my feeling is that this is quite complex and it's not something which is easy to digest or it is easy to remember or research upon probably i personally feel whenever you have a need to transfer money outside of india liberalized remittance scheme is the scheme under which you have to transfer the money but before you transfer the money the best suggestion that i can think of is contact a professional chartered accountant explain your situation why you are transferring money and all these details and let them take a decision or guide you how you have to go about is it a safer way of uh, handling this particular uh, issue yes sir it is always uh, better to handle the situation like this because the rules are ever evolving ah the rule what i am saying now there is a framework i am not saying any particular transaction which is allowed or not allowed but there is a framework that framework will remain the same however if you see the particular transaction which may be allowed today may not be allowed tomorrow absolutely Absolutely. or which is not allowed today may get allowed tomorrow absolutely even the limits can uh, increase or decrease yes. and depending on the evolving situation government of the day may bring in restrictions or liberalize that's Correct. a possibility it's best to take the help of a professional uh, in this particular matter Correct. Yeah. Correct. mr shriram uh, for the benefit of our uh, audience is it possible to tell what is not permitted to say all these are permitted it takes a lot of time correct but let's say at least the major headings under which the money cannot be transferred uh, can you give some inputs around that see certain transactions which are normally um, done through gambling ah say for example winning from a lottery okay. or winning from horse race or horse riding so they are all actually a part of a gambling so any income which is earned out of that cannot be transferred outside india okay so this is the major you know kind of restriction. Uh, restriction i can say okay so apart from this uh, there are certain um, uh, transactions which are done to a particular country ah say for example negative list negative list there is a non cooperative countries fatf yes fatf uh, they have a financial action task force they have listed certain countries as non cooperative countries this north korea iran ha so certain countries so you cannot make any transaction to them okay. so they are not covered under lrs if any transaction which is prohibited under fema ha. that cannot be done under lrs okay okay so it is as simple as that so so the guiding principle here is the fema lrs is framed under the uh, the fema yes so if fema prohibits doing certain thing You that just can't use an LRS yes, scheme at all. It you you cannot. just that's not possible. Yes. So as I said, it is better to come to a chartered accountant, check what is the status quo on that particular date, yes. uh, what is governing and what is uh, not permitted. You can find out and you can proceed on that. Correct, Mr. Sri Ram. One of the uh, things that come to my mind is now we have an LRS and we say that two hundred fifty thousand US dollar can be remitted 
to outside of India. Yes, sir. Okay. If a resident wants to give a loan to a non-resident, can he use this LRS, buy forex, and give a loan to somebody else? Sir, this LRS scheme as a whole is not only for remittance of funds outside of India by a resident to a non-resident. It is for all transactions between a resident to a non-resident, a resident remitter transferring fund to a non-resident, ah. whether in INR or for a forex uh, transaction, that will be covered under LRS. Oh, money need not go outside of India? No, no, no. Under the LRS scheme as a whole. Let me explain uh, here a little bit. My father is a resident. I am a NRA. Hmm. Any money my father gives me will come under LRS. Yes. He, whether he gives me in India or whether he transfers money to outside of India. Correct. So that is covered by LRS. Yes. So it's just not that I, I am buying a forex and only to buying forex it is uh, LRS is 250,000 no. euros. No. Not like that. Okay. So this is the entire framework of LRS as such. Okay. However, when it comes to giving of loan by a resident to a non-resident, hmm. this restriction is still more stringent. Okay. It can be given, but it can be given only in INR. It cannot be given in foreign exchange uh, at all. So loan can be given only in the Indian currency. Yes. You can't buy a foreign currency. No. But again, this loan is restricted to the overall limit under LRS, 250,000 yes. US dollar or its equivalent. Yes. And loan can be transferred in INR from a resident to a non-resident to the NRO account of non-resident only. Okay. It cannot be repatriated outside of India. Who cannot repatriate outside of India? The receiver also cannot repatriate this money. The, res the remitter also cannot repatriate huh. if it is in the nature of loan. The receiver also cannot repatriate if it is in the nature of He loan. can utilize it in India for whatever purpose. Yes. And is there a restriction on for this resident Indian who can he give the loan? Yes, there are restrictions. Only a resident can transfer as a loan only to a non-resident relative. Okay. That means the non-resident to whom the loan is being given should be a relative and the relative is already defined under company side. So either it is a sibling or parents or children, spouse or spouses of children. So here the relative is as defined in the Companies Act. Yes. This is another complexity. Yes. This is not uh, uh, what uh, relative is explained in uh, a gifts case. No, no, we, no. What we talked about. No, no, no. So where there is a much broader universe. Broader, yes. But here it is as defined in uh, Companies, Companies Act. Act. Correct. So. So, LRS scheme covers loans, yes, Correct. Uh, you can give a loan to a non-resident uh, under LRS, Yes. but condition is it, you can't buy forex, Correct. you have to remit money to an NRO account Correct. and you can give it only to a relative. Correct. And it has to be utilized in India. It should be utilized in India. Yes. And such loan should be interest free. Okay. Such loan should be interest free. and. It, it should have a minimum maturity period of one year. Okay. So you give me a, a, a relative of mine gives me a loan. So the tenure should be minimum one year. Yes. And I should not be paying any interest or he should not be receiving any interest. for. So yes. it's not a commercial consideration. Yes. It's purely an arrangement. Correct. Right. I, ca I have no, I cannot take a loan from my friend at all. Correct. But if, if a friend of mine urgently want some money I, I want certain money from my friend he gives me money and next month i'll give it back to him will it be treated as a loan or it will be treated as a loan only but these transactions are not covered under lrs okay okay these transactions are not at all covered under lrs okay so actually speaking if this kind of transaction happens then we need to see the other criteria under fema Okay. Whether it will be allowed or not. Hmm. But it is not covered under LRS. Okay. That's how it is. So the best way is, if this kind of a transactions are not allowed, <laughs> better you refrain from doing such kind of an activity Correct. than to find out whether it is permitted or not, how we can come about it, instead Correct. of getting it to that argument, uh, restrict ourselves to what is permitted under the law. That's yes. the best course uh, anybody could uh, follow on that. Correct. Mr. Sriram, 
Uh, one another uh, thing that comes to my mind is often uh, people need to give gifts to somebody else. I have to give a gift to my son and my son lives outside of India. Uh, will LRS be used for that and are there any restrictions on giving gifts? Uh, can you tell me the brief uh, uh, the points under which the gifts can be transferred? A resident transferring to a non-resident relative okay. as a gift is covered under LRS. Okay. And uh, such transactions can be done either in INR or even in uh, Forex and within the overall limit of 2.5 uh, lakh uh, USD that uh, payment can be done, gift okay. can be given. So it should be gift. Yes. So, the, uh, so the relative can buy a Forex yes. and transfer it to the non-resident Ind Indian as well as he can transfer it to the NRO account. Both are permitted. permitted. The only thing is upper limit of uh, annual uh, huh. uh, transfer has to be adhered to. Correct. Okay. One another case scenario which emerges in case of uh, some of the past NRIs, they were working as NRIs outside, they come back and because of their forex needs, they have maintained the RFC account. FCNR accounts get converted to RFC account, they yes. have maintained RFC account. Now, if somebody is having money in an RFC account and now he is a resident, Correct. Uh, will LRS cover remittances from RFC account? Is the same rules and regulations follow that or is there a different set of rules and regulations for RFC account? No. Any payment made out of India from RFC account okay. because RFC account is just a, you know, uh, account which is uh, maintaining funds in foreign currency. Yeah. So that a person. It's a resident want, account. Yes. But you are holding a foreign currency. Foreign currency That's account. It. That's it. So if a resident wants to transfer from RFC account, his RFC account to an account outside of India to a non-resident, hmm. that is also covered under LRS. Hmm. Hmm. And within whatever the guidelines given under LRS, hmm. if it is a permitted transaction, he can do it. Okay. So only uh, uh, the saving for him is. He need not purchase a foreign currency, he has already has a foreign currency, that's right, it. Right. So any transfer from RFC also is co covered under LRS. So the same set of rules and regulations, so uh, no question of buying a forex, it is, it is already yes, there. available. That's it. that's it, okay. Mr. Sriram, we understood all these things. Now we come to the actual part of how to remit. What is the step by step process? What is the documentation that needs to be done? Where should a person go? Are there any complications? How to go about it? Can you briefly tell uh, the audience? See, first of all, in any transaction which a remitter wants to transfer funds, he has to identify what is the nature of transaction. And there will be particular forms such as form A2. Hmm. That is the one particular type of form which needs to be submitted hmm. while transferring funds from India to outside of India. What is this A2 form? It is a simple form under FEMA. Yeah, what does that cover? It, the it type covers what is the amount uh, from whom the funds will be transferred, to whom it will be transferred, to which account it will be transferred okay. and in which um, uh, foreign currency it has to be bought and transferred okay. and uh, certain other criteria such as uh, what is the nature of transaction that needs to be declared under, under that okay. form A2. Okay. So it has the complete detail. It's yes. a, it's a, you can say it's an information sheet yes. who is paying to whom, yes. which account, which country, yes. how much amount. And uh, does, uh, does a person also have to tick for what purpose he is remitting there? Yes. The purpose of remittance also has to be mentioned. Okay. And uh, pan of the remitter. Okay. The person who is remitting, who is a resident, okay. that is compulsory. Okay. That needs to be provided. Okay. So, all this information would be collected in form which is, uh, you know, prescribed for the pur purpose of transaction uh, for a particular transaction. Okay. So, if I have to transfer money to somebody outside of India and if I am a resident, I will walk into one of the bank branches which deals in forex uh, uh, related uh, transactions Correct. or maybe I will walk into a money exchange Correct. and submit my A2 form Correct. right? and correctly uh, give everything, details, everything Correct. and then I am allowed to transfer. Yes. It is as simple as that. Yes, the bankers will help most of the times. Okay, so, so any bank which deals in, uh, uh, we call it as authorized dealers in India. Correct. Right? AD. So, not much of a exchanges are there in India like uh, it is there outside of India. Here it is usually the bank uh, portals or the bank branches which deal in the forex. Right. So, the form that you need to be filling is an A2 form. So, fill the A2 form 
and give it to the authorized uh, dealer which could be your uh, bank or a exchange like a Thomas Cook or uh, any other money exchange and you can transfer it under the LRS. Mr. Sriram, this A2 form you said you have to uh, fill and give. Correct. What I suggest is that we will add this A2 form in the description box of our uh, video here. People can go through it and as I saw there are a lot of uh, uh, things to be ticked there. Is there any precaution people have to take while filling this A2 form and giving it to the, uh, the uh, forex dealer? See, the correct information has to be filled in A2 form. Any form, whatever you uh, has to submit, it is always better to give the correct information in the form. Okay. In that, actually, all both the remitters, remittances, uh, who is remitty, their details, anyway, it has to be properly filled up. Apart from that, the very important thing here is to check the right box when there is, I mean, for the purpose of, uh, you know, transaction, mm. what mm. you are doing. Say, you are trans you're transferring remittance for the purpose of medical treatment. Okay. Or say, traveling abroad. Okay. Say, or for maintenance of your family abroad. Okay. So, there are certain codes given by RBI for each type of transaction. It is very important for an individual to tick the right box there. So, you, you, can't right be you can't be ticking just like anything no. and uh, do it, but be very, very specific why yes. you are transferring this money. Yes. It could be helping your child, it could yes. be helping your brother or whatever it is. Or even your investment you can Investment be account. Yes. So, be very, very specific and tick the right boxes. Correct. If you don't tick the right boxes, then the chances are that your transaction may not go through. Correct. Or maybe uh, questioned at a later point. Correct. This is one of the actually very important things which needs to be taken into consideration. Okay. One another question that comes to my mind is, because of this scheme, it has become simpler and it is more or less clearly defined what can be done and what cannot be done. Correct. Is there a need for a chartered accountant's uh, certificate or something like that? Uh, see, when we transfer money from NRO to NRV, yes. so a CA certificate was required. Yes. In case of LRS transaction, uh, yes. Is there a need for a somebody to go to a chartered account and get his signature and give it to the authorized dealer? Yes, yes. It depends on the nature of transaction again. Not every transaction. Not every transaction. Okay. There are two forms under uh, Income Tax Act. This is different because it is uh, looking into the tax aspect now. Okay. So, there are two forms. One is Form 15 CA and Form 15 CB. Okay. So, this is the similar as, you know, for transfer of funds from NRO to NRE. Okay. So, there also we need to see what is the type of transaction. Mm. So, there are 33 transactions mm. which is listed under the income tax rules for which this entire form itself is not required. Ah, okay. Okay, there are 33 items and there, there is a RBI code also for that. Mm. So, such as say payment for the medical treatment, mm. payment for the education purpose, payment as a gift, payment mm. as a donation. Mm -hmm. or say investment abroad mm. or say payment towards um, purchase of some uh, uh, goods or article. Mm. So, for s most of these uh, items there are list, detailed list and there is a RBA code for that. For those particular transactions there is no requirement of any form 15 CA or PB. 15 CB, not required. Not required. Okay. Apart from this if there are transactions there are certain things which needs to be taken into consideration, whether it is a amount which is being transferred, whether already charged to tax or not charged to tax. If it is not charged tax, only form 15 CA part D would attract. If it is chargeable to tax, then there can be three types of things, 15 CA and 15 CB may be in combination, may be required. Okay. So, this depends on the particular transaction. If the amount of remittance is uh, by a resident to a non-resident and the amount what is being transferred is less than 5 lakh INR, mm. then only for Form 15 CA, Part A would suffice. There is no requirement of Form 15 CB. So, the so requirement of 15 CA and CB may be linked to filling up uh, Form A2. Yes. So, you tick certain boxes. Yes. When you tick certain boxes and if some of the transactions might require 15 CA and CB. Yes. But for most of the transactions which happen on a routine basis, huh. Uh, what you described already. Correct. So, so in such cases, for 15 CACB is not required. May not be required. required. So it is only in few transactions specified uh, 
uh, kind Under, of uh, transactions yes. that 15C and 50CB could be required. Yes. In a normal routine uh, transactions, uh, these 15C and CB is not required. Anybody can walk into an authorized dealer, uh, provide A2 uh, form and uh, make sure that you are within that uh, transferable limit and it should be easily transferred. Yes. Right. Uh, recently, there was uh, some news that if somebody has to transfer money from India to abroad, uh, they have to put, uh, pay some taxes. This issue was there in the newspaper and it created a lot of commotion uh, that we have to pay such a huge amount of taxes. What is this tax on remittances which are outside of India? Can you throw some light on that? Yes. Now, uh, this is a recent amendment. Uh, came in uh, only with effect from uh, 1st October 2020. Okay. So, any transaction by a resident to a non-resident which is covered under LRS. Okay. Which is covered under LRS and the amount which is being transferred is during the financial year exceeds the 7 lakh rupees. Okay. It's IN or 7 lakh. Not which, which probably was equated to about 10,000 dollars. Yes. Right. So, okay. if any amount which is being transferred over and above this transaction, the, this uh, specified amount, then the authorized dealer will collect 5% mm. as TCS over and above the amount being transferred. So, it is TCS, it is yes. not tax, tax it's, it's collected at source. source, preventive taxation. Yes. Okay. It is a tax collected at source okay. and on the remitter's account, the authorized dealer will transfer it to the income tax department. Just like when we buy a vehicle or something like that, yes. these uh, persons will do TCS, it is a similar thing. Yes. So, it is a large size transaction when it crosses the threshold of 7 lakh rupees. Correct. So, the uh, the uh, forex dealer will uh, deduct that 5% uh, tax and remits to the government. Correct. And you have to, uh, while filing the tax return, your chartered accountant or you have to uh, declare this and see Correct. how it needs to be treated under the income tax. Correct. So, it is not a specific tax which is levied on uh, remittance. No. It is a TCS and 5% okay. is the rate. Okay. However, if it is an education loan okay. and education loan is taken and the fund is being transferred for the purpose of education, okay. then that 5% TCS has been reduced to 0.5%. Because it is, see, I want to transfer uh, funds to my son who is uh, studying abroad. Hmm. So, at that time, I take an education loan in his name and transfer the funds. Okay. So, at that time, See, anyway, that is a loan what I have taken yeah. and if I have to pay over and above that 5%, it is very burdensome for me. So, the remitter has to give a documentary evidence yes. to say that this money has come by way of an education loan Correct. and a waiver, waiver will be applied. Yes. So, only in case of education loan, this TCS uh, is brought down to 0.5%. Point, point 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 yes, in the percent. normal course, it is 5% five five percent of the amount which is uh, which exceeding, is exceeding seven, 7 lakh. Yes. Okay. This is how it is. So, if it is above 7 lakhs, 5% is collected on the entire amount or only the amount which is in excess of 7 lakhs? Only the amount in excess of 7 lakhs, on that 5% will be collected. Okay, if somebody remits 15 lakhs, hmm. uh, first 7 lakhs they need not collect any uh, TCS, 7 to 15 lakhs, another 8 lakhs will yes. suffer a TCS of 8%. 5%. Oh, sorry, um, uh, the 8 lakhs will suffer a uh, TCS of 5%. 5%. Yes. And, and it will reflect on your 26 years. statement. Yes, and while filing the return of income, if you are supposed to pay any taxes, you can adjust this TCS towards the payment of that tax. Okay. If the TCS deducted is collected is in excess of the tax payable, that can be claimed as a refund while filing a refund. the return of it's income. It just like uh, follows the principle of TDS. Yes. Right. Okay. Mr. Sriram, thank you very much for all these inputs. Uh, many of the doubts that were there in the minds of our audience uh, how to transfer money from uh, India to outside of India has been put to rest uh, with this piece of information. Thank you very much again for coming to the studios and uh, providing all this information. Thank you. You are welcome sir. Dear viewers, to summarize, it is the liberalized remittance scheme which you have to utilize if you have to transfer money from India to outside of India. Your limit is 250,000 US dollar or its equivalent. You have to follow the rules which have been levied under the FEMA law. You are best advised to take the help of a chartered accountant whenever there is a need to transfer money under LRS to someone outside of India. Hope the episode that we have done today helped you to understand this minefield of how to transfer money from India to outside. If it helped you, please like this video. If you are a person who is watching this channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel, please hit the subscribe button. 
Don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another topic in yet another video very very soon. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.